My favorite part about science is how it can be applied to all kinds of situations. Anywhere you want, you can take science and apply it to everyday life. My favorite part of the scientific process is doing your experiments and then building something out of those results. I would say it's testing. Without testing, you would just go through a bunch of assumptions and you'll never know if your goal is actually being fulfilled. The 3M Young Scientist Challenge is amazing because these students come from all over the nation and they have many different interests, but the one commonality they have is science. Science is the gift that just keeps on giving. The really, really frustrating moments when your prototype doesn't work are the moments that make your brain grow, and my brain growing is a great thing, especially if I can help somebody who needs it. The children today are thinking bigger. They're thinking in very innovative ways. They are wise beyond their years. They already have that love, and once they build it, they realize that that is within me. I can do it. I created an ocean energy collection device that converts the kinetic movement of water into electricity for people of developing countries. My pen pal in Ethiopia is nine years old and she's living in energy poverty and I wanted to create a solution that could help her and provide electricity so that she can have some of the same opportunities that I do. My project was a device for the autistic in which it detects the stress level of an individual wearing it. I saw autistic students go through uh, emotional outbursts and learned that these emotional outbursts are known as meltdowns and they are triggered by these high stress levels. Since I'm really interested in Science, I thought there could be a way to solve this problem. When they come to the 3M Innovation Center, they see that this is so much more than just their science project. It's about relationships. Science is about conversation, and they get to meet other young scientists. These kids are going to do amazing things. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Bryant. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We're incredibly excited to talk about what that video you just saw was, was, was all about, that unique experience that is the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge. We're excited to have so many of you online today to view this, and most importantly, to join the conversation. Throughout the entire live broadcast, we want you to join it by using the hashtag Young Scientist. It's all you have to do, ask as many questions as you would like, We'll try to get to as many throughout the broadcast here today. And if we don't get to them, we'll answer them right after. So as you saw in that video, some amazing experiences happen as you go through the challenge. And who better to talk about these experiences than our America's top young scientist, Hannah. We have Hannah with us here today. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to be here. Thank you. It, this is such a great facility and place. Would you mind, you know, tell everyone where, where are we today? Where are we located? Uh, you know, where are we shooting live from? Well, today we're at my high school, Florida Atlantic University High School, which is in Boca Raton, Florida. Perfect. A beautiful location, 
Coming from Chicago, it's great to see, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see this thing called the sun. We haven't seen that in a while, so it's great to be down here. Thank you for your time. Uh, so I, I talk about the, you know, the Discover Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge all over the country. I meet with teachers, and I usually bring in a list of those projects. So some of you may have seen projects from last year or from the many years in the past. So what I do is I take that list and I tell them, you know, summarize this. Tell me, what do you think this list of projects are? Where do they come from? And notoriously, every time I do that, they always talk about these lists come from, you know, projects that a college engineering institute is working on, or it's, it's future technologies that they're working on. Uh, and I have to let them in and say, you know what, these are what fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are working on. This, these come out of our, our Young Scientist Challenge. These are what these middle school students have worked on, they've worked with mentors on, and they've developed these projects that are truly making a difference in the world. So what, you know, being America's top young scientist, what was the project that you submitted? What did you work on? Well, I created an ocean energy collection device called BEACON, which stands for Bringing Electricity Access to Countries Through Ocean Energy. And pretty much what it does is it converts the kinetic movement of current energy from any moving body of water into usable electricity. That's uh a mouthful to say the least. <laughs> it's certainly more than what I was doing when I was in middle school. What, what, what grade were you in when you started that project or got that idea? Well, I received this newsletter talking about how my nine-year-old pen pal Ruth was living in energy poverty in Ethiopia. And this statistic really hit me hard, so I did a bit more research and learned that over one-fifth of our population is living without access to electricity. So I knew I had to do something about the global energy crisis, but the idea of collecting ocean energy came to me while fishing. I love to fish on the weekends with my family. And we were exiting through something called the Boca Raton Inlet, which allows access between the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway. And a lot of tidal flux is pushed to this inlet. And our boat got pushed by that tidal flux. So I saw this current energy, and I thought, why not collect this? But, I mean, that's fantastic. It's a great tip for all of you who are out there looking for what, how do I come up with this idea? So you, know, you were certainly in, inspired by you know, pen pal, by things that you're going out with your family and doing, so observing things there. Um, you, know, you certainly didn't just wake up one morning and go like, you know what, today, the energy crisis. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to knock this out by noon today. So, Definitely not. <laughs> so for everybody out there watching, you know, one of the things is it just come up with that idea. And it can come from a lot of different places. Uh, it can come from inspiration when you're out with your family, out with your friends, around your school. We just want to make sure that you get that idea in place and then that's something you can work on to submit like you, know, you did with that two minute video that we have out there. So one of the things, how did you find out about the Young Scientist Challenge? So the Discovery Station Young, Young Scientist, the 3M Young Scientist Challenge is something that has been around for a lot of years, but how did you find out about it? And then what were your next steps after you found out about the challenge itself? So I began my whole science fair journey by competing in the Palm Beach Regional Science and Engineering Fair. And I was really honored to be able to move on to the state science fair and win the state science fair. So my eighth grade science teacher um, was my chaperone for Science Olympiad, and she gave me this information about the Young Scientist Challenge. And at first, I was like, OK, I don't have time to make a two-minute video. But I mean, it's only two minutes long. And it took me about a week to make and really perfect it and refine it. But it was so worth it when I got that call that I was a finalist. Oh, I, I bet. So you know, it, there might be some people who haven't seen that video. So what we have right now is the ability to share that with you. Take a look at what Hannah submitted. Uh, again, for the Discover Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge, it's a, a quick video. Anyone can do it. Get that idea, submit it. Take a look at what Hannah was able to do and submit it in. As the world's non-renewable energy supply is being consumed, a sustainable, environmentally safe power source is vital for future generations. My name is Hannah Herbs, and I want to provide a source of stable power and fresh water for people of developing countries. The Intracoastal Waterway runs along the east coast of the U.S. from the Florida Keys to Virginia and is 3,000 miles long. The exchange of tides and the inlets that allow access between the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway create a large amount of uncollected potential current energy. Currently, the majority of the world's energy supply comes from non-renewable fossil fuels and nuclear energy. I wanted to create a more plausible solution to the world's energy crisis by obtaining ocean current energy from tidal flux in the Boca Raton Inlet. Prior to testing or creating my device, I obtained permission to place my ocean energy probe in the Boca Raton Inlet. Then I conducted an underwater survey and witnessed the marine environment in the Boca Raton Inlet. I experimented with different iterations of the ocean energy probe. This is the superlative design of the ocean energy probe. 
The current energy in the Boca Raton Inlet, represented by my hand, drives the mechanical movement of this propeller system, which in turn drives a hydroelectric generator via a pulley system inside of the ocean energy probe. The mechanical movement of the turbine is then converted into usable power through the generator. It's that simple. 3D printing is the melting of environmentally friendly plastic to create objects. I utilized polylactic acid to 3D print the propeller. Before creating the ocean energy probe, I created a computer assisted design model or CAD model of the probe to avoid flaws in the design. I extrapolated the data obtained with the superlative design of the ocean energy probe and found that if I were to scale up my design in the future, then I would theoretically have the capacity to power three car batteries simultaneously in under one hour. This means that I could power water osmosis desanalyzed pumps, which can convert salt water into potable water and therefore provide clean drinking water to people of developing countries. Additionally, the energy collected from the probe can be used to power blood centrifuges to pinpoint and destroy potentially catastrophic epidemics before their outbreak, or power beach lights to promote maritime navigation on the coast of developing countries. I'm excited to aid the world's energy crisis. I can't wait to save lives with my invention. So that was a great video. Uh, I think one of the things to take away from that is to know that Anyone can do it. You didn't. You didn't have a, a like five-person film crew going around with you, right? <laughs> Definitely not. So the idea you can submit that video, you can create it. You just need that that idea. Uh, and one of the things that came out of that is you're talking. You have a prototype that you built from that. Would you mind showing everybody and talking a little bit about the initial prototype that you built? Sure. So I started out by creating the handheld series of my prototypes, and this is the final handheld model that has a three-bladed propeller system and the way that it works is there's this axle inside and when this propeller rotates it spins this pulley system inside which can then rotate this hydroelectric generator and then generate electricity. That's really cool. Thank you. So I, I mean so that came out of your some of the research that you've done and we've had some questions come in about that already. So we have again if you're, you're out there you have questions make sure you submit them use the hashtag young scientist we're pulling them in now one of the questions that we had uh, come in, it came from uh, Mrs. Grant's fifth grade classroom in Cartersville, Georgia. And uh, if you are out there watching this now, again, submit your questions. If you have pictures, we have pictures coming in of you watching this broadcast uh, live with Hannah. So the question that came in, though, is around research. So how, how did you research your idea? What were the steps you kind of took to get to the point of submitting your video and, of course, building your, your first prototype? Well, when I first saw this current energy and came up with my idea, I just started by Googling it, you know? I mean, I looked up current energy projects that have already been done, and then I thought of, you know, how could I actually do this? I searched for materials. But another really great resource for anybody who's interested in this is to talk to your teachers, talk to your parents, you know? Say, hey, what do you think of this idea? And just kind of try stuff, and if it fails, that's okay. Just take it as a, as a success. And if it's successful, then there you go. But Failure is always your first attempt in learning. Exactly. It's always those big, that, that, that mantra of science, of engineering, and uh, you certainly have taken it to heart. Everyone out there watching, uh, you gotta try, and it's okay to fail. It's okay to make the, go through that, that process over and over again. So you, you went through this process, uh, and you submitted the video. What were you doing when you found out that you were a finalist for this? What, what, what was that moment like? What, what, what were you doing, and what happened next? Well, I was actually right here at FAU High School. I was working on a robotics competition called Sea Perch, where you build something called an ROV, or a remotely operated vehicle, that can complete a, ser a series of challenges underwater in a pool. And I was building that with some of my friends, and my mom started texting me, like, discoveries on the phone. And I was like, discovery? Wait, the TV show? And then they're like, and she's like, no, the Young Scientist Challenge. I was like, oh my gosh. So I ran outside, and I pick up the, picked up the phone, and someone said, congrats, you're a finalist. And that was an amazing moment to have here. I bet. I, did, I mean, that, I, I, you make me want to go back. <laughs> you know, not a lot can make me want to go back to the middle school years, but that <laughs> makes me kind of want to go back. So with that, you become a finalist. And for anyone out there, if you become a finalist for this, uh, you're paired up with a mentor. Yes. Right? So from 3M, you, they work to get a mentor to help you, uh, whether you just had an idea and you haven't built a prototype yet, which is perfectly fine, or if you have a prototype to then start working on uh, a different iteration of that, so different versions of that to build off of what you've already done. So you you were paired up with a, uh, a mentor from 3M. Uh, who was that, and what was what was that experience like? Well, my mentor was Jeff M. Slander, and he works at the 3M headquarters in St. Paul, Minnesota. And that was an amazing experience. Our first call was a little awkward just because it was the first time, but. I remember that next um, Tuesday, we got onto Skype, and he was like, hey, Hannah, I'm Jeff. And then we started talking about how we could start developing my prototypes and my ideas in order to compete in the Young Scientist Challenge and have a great time in St. Paul. Oh, that's fantastic. 
So through that work, so you worked with him. I know he connected you with other people at, at 3M when that came up. Uh, yes. Just a great collaboration. And you spent a lot of hours to get to what we're sitting next to here, which is Beacon 2.0, right? Yes. So, so I think it, I would love you know, for them to see kind of the progression. We saw the first prototype to this. What, can you describe this a little bit to, to everybody out there? What are some of the things that happened? What is, what is, what is all this? And you know, kind of show them maybe how it works. Well, I can probably start by showing you how it works. So this string represents current energy in any moving body of water. And as I spin this string, the energy will travel and then light up that light system you see on top of the prototype. So the way that this works is this is an AC generator, and it produces AC current, which is pretty much like electrons. And the electrons are in this big electron cloud. So I had to install a bridge rectifier in order to take that crazy cloud of electrons and assemble it into one straight line of electrons. So that straight line of electrons then travels through some of these wires back here with some of our 3M materials tacked on in order to insulate that. And then it can light up those lights. And those lights can be replaced with batteries that can potentially charge medical supplies, fresh water pumps, whatever you want. Perfect. I mean, that's, that's amazing, the, the work that you put into this. And especially the, from moving from that initial idea to the first prototype to then through that work with the mentor to, to build something of this scale and something like this. Right. Um, I, I think you know, one of the things that we do if you are a finalist for, for the Young Scientist Challenge, is you get to go to the 3M Innovation Center. Right. Right? So that's one of the experiences that you get to have. What was that like? I, I've been there, I think it's an amazing place, but for you coming in as a finalist for you know, the Discovery Station 3M Young Scientist Challenge, what, what, was, what was that like? What was that experience like for you? It was amazing. It's nothing like you see online. I mean, it's kind of like that, but it's so much more than that. I mean, you get to go into the Innovation Center and see all the stuff that 3M is working on. And probably the best part of that is right when you get there, the very first day, and you meet your mentor. And you walk in, and they're all waiting in a line. And then they're like, hi. And it's an awesome moment to be able to be there for. I, it sounds like it. I mean, that would be pretty cool. I, I've been there. And anyone who hasn't seen it, I encourage you again, you know, make that two-minute video. It's so worth it to, to be able to go and experience that like Hannah got to. Definitely. Uh, and on top of all that, so we've talked about a lot already. You won, right? You, you won. You are America's top young scientist. Um, you know, you have that experience. I don't think everyone out there has seen that. But let's, for just a minute, let's relive that experience now with everyone. So you can see Hannah winning uh, the 3M Young Scientist Challenge. America's 2015 top young scientist is Hannah Hurst. So that had to be just amazing. What 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 was going through your mind at that time? So your name is called out. You're the winner. You're America's top young scientist. What was that like? What was going through your head? It was amazing. I mean, they started calling off the places. It was like fourth. And I thought, OK, fourth or third, maybe. And then they called third. And I was like, OK, I'm either done for or I've won. And then second and first. And I was just so overwhelmed and excited to have been able to win that. My mentor and my family were standing up and clapping. And it was awesome. <laughs> I bet. I, I mean, one of the things that we've had people come in and ask about, so everyone out there is probably curious, we've had questions come in about it. You won, you're, you're America's top young scientist. Uh, so what did you win and, and what did that lead to? What are experiences you've had since then? Well, the first thing that I won as a finalist is a trip to the 3M Innovation Center, which was the best thing ever because I got to bond with the other finalists. We went to the finalist fun room, but I'm not gonna say too much about that. And that was a lot of fun. But after that, after you're crowned America's top young scientist, you obviously get that title and $25,000 and a trip to a certain destination. And that was really overwhelming and amazing to be able to obtain that prize. But even more than that, there are so many opportunities that come from winning this competition and even just participating in it. I mean, we get to go all over the country and be on television and speak at conferences. It was really, really fun. And I also got to speak with my mentor at the Social Innovation Summit, which was just amazing. I just loved to be able to see him again and to speak at that conference. 
So, I mean, so you heard it here. It's a lot of fun. Yes. It's an amazing experience. And it starts with a two-minute video, roughly. Exactly. Like idea and a two-minute video. Uh, we've had questions come in. Keep having the questions come in. Remember the, the hashtag, Young Scientist. Uh, some of the questions, we're going to go to a few of those questions right now. Okay. So we're going to switch over to that a little bit. And I do have the first question already uh, here. It comes from uh, Fifth Grade Excel. And it is from Holly Springs Motlow School, I believe. And the question is, what would you say has been the hardest obstacle to overcome as a part of this challenge? Well, there were definitely several obstacles. One of the major ones was being able to cater to the needs of people in developing countries. So they have zero electricity over there. There's no lights, no medical supplies, no nothing. So when I was developing my prototypes, I had to be able to make it easy to use and economically feasible so that it would be easier to deploy to Ruth and her family. So I used a lot of 3M materials and a lot of my mentor's advice in order to develop this prototype to their specifications. So we have uh, Brayden age 11, who really wants to know, you know, what was your reaction when you found out you were chosen as the top young scientist? So I know you're incredibly excited, but what you wanted, she wants to know really, what, what was that? What was that reaction like? Well, it was awesome. I mean, you sit there and they call your name, and it's, it's a dream come true. It's like Christmas times a million. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good answer. It, it is. That's what it's like. <laughs> so we have uh, Mrs. Uh, Grumman's class from Cummings, Georgia. Is this the first scientific idea you, you've researched? Is this the first thing that you've done from a project standpoint? This really is. In seventh grade, I was enrolled in this summer engineering camp, and I really didn't want to be there. But I wanted to be there even less when I walked in, and I was the only girl. And I had never really done science up to that point. And I walked into the camp, and I started playing with FLL, first LEGO League robots. I started programming and building. And that's when I really got interested in science. So imagine, I mean, I had that one-week summer experience, and then just a few months later, I started to develop this project. So this is really the first project that I've started to develop real time. All right. So one other question we have, a couple more here that we can get through. Uh, we have a question coming in from uh, Karen Lang, who is at Monticello, New York. That's where she's at. And wants to know, how long did you work with your scientists in planning your project? Mm, we started in about... June, I think, and we went until October. We were actually texting right until I met him, like right that very morning. I was like, I'm on my way. And it's an awesome experience because you get to develop that relationship, and that's another opportunity for you because you've got contact now with him, who's a 3M scientist. And 3M is such a tight-knit company that if he doesn't know too much about a particular subject, he puts me in contact with another scientist. And so it's just so amazing to be able to interact with them that way. And that's, I mean, that's a good point, too, for anyone who takes a part of this. To have connections now, you, you, you have that connection for life and probably with a lot of other people who are at 3M. Uh, and certainly if that's a field you want to go into, you, you've got these connections with a wonderful company, right? So it's, it's a pretty cool thing to do. Exactly. Um, we have another question coming in from uh, William uh, Grayslack from Avon Middle School. Uh, when making your video, at what point of editing did you say that your video was ready? Well, I made all the clips and I videotaped them several times to make sure that I had all the clips quite right. And I put them all together. And I didn't actually say it was ready until right up until a couple days before it was due when I had played it about a million times and made sure that everything was spliced the way that I wanted it. This video really does take a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it to be able to have this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, I, absolutely. So we have another question from Diane. And Diane wants to know, what advice do you have for students who are interested in participating in you know, the Discover Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge? What advice? Well, you really need to start with an idea. And once you have that idea, just try stuff. I mean, I started out developing my prototype out of plastic bottles and cardboard. And that's OK, because you can just draw something out and think of it. You know, Really get your research done. That's a big, big part of it. Google stuff, try to find answers to your questions. And that's really what science is about, is asking questions. And science is about discovery. And it's not just reading out of a textbook. It's a lot more than that. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. The, another, cla uh, another class we have joining us, Miss Julie's class uh, out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, they want to know, what are your goals for your, f uh, your future of being a scientist? Well, next year, I'll be in college at Florida Atlantic University. And I'm still deciding what major, but I'm definitely going to go some kind of engineering route in order to do, you know, maybe mechanical or computer. I'm not quite sure yet. 
And I'm not sure what I want to do in the field yet, but no matter what I do, I want to solve the world's crises and save people's lives. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good goal. <laughs> that's a pretty good set there. Um, we have uh, Amani, age 11, who wants to know, have you ever had times where you wanted to give up on your inventions? Well, I think we all come to a point where we want to throw the towel in, but if you can take those failures that you have and you can turn them into successes, then that's a lot more beneficial than just throwing away all of your work. I started out developing my prototype actually trying to collect wave energy, and I made this big crazy contraption, and it broke several times, and it just didn't work. So sometimes you've got to know when to cut your losses and try another type of project or try another form of your project. You just can't give up too quickly, and you've just got to keep trying stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, you know, failure is that first step or you know, first attempt in learning. So you keep going on again and again and again. Exactly. Uh, another question we have coming in, uh, how many prototypes did you build before you got to the final product? And really was there a moment when you wanted, again, kind of wanted to give up on that process? Well, I did want to give up, as I just said, but <laughs> I built six prototypes total that actually kind of worked. So the handheld iteration, the first one didn't go so well. I made an impeller system where I had this big bulky housing and a little tiny propeller inside. And that propeller spun, but then it got caught up in all the bubbles that were forming inside of it called cavitation. And that didn't work too well. But I continued to keep on trying, and I eventually got to Beacon 1.0. And then I built Beacon 2.0, and this one was already much more successful than Beacon 1.0. So I figure that in the future, this will be more for developing countries because it's autonomous and it's more self-contained. But Beacon 1.0 will be more for classroom applications to promote STEM learning. That's good. That's, that's great. That kind of ties into what we, we have with the next question here from uh, Jenna McRae. And Jenna wants to know, would you ever build another science invention? Definitely. There's always more problems to solve. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Probably a lot, right? I, yes. Just looking around this room, I think you're trying to troubleshoot a lot of problems. We've got right? a lot of problems going on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great to see all the things that are being built just, just here in this room alone. Uh, so. Uh, at College Experts wants to know, other than your teacher and before help with 3M, where else did you get help? Well, I'm at Florida Atlantic University High School, and there's tons of awesome resources here. I have my STEM coordinator, Mr. Phipps. Um, my parents were always really encouraging of my ideas. And I was able to get in contact with some people at FAU's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution, where they are actually developing a big turbine themselves. And I got to get advice from some of the people who are working on it there. Okay. Well, that's good. And a lot of people to help out, right? Like a lot of people you can, can turn to. Uh, so we have another question coming in from uh, Jamila, who is age 11, and wants to know, what made you want to be a scientist? Well, definitely that experience at engineering camp where I just kept failing and failing. And everybody was looking at me like, how are you not done already? And I really wanted to keep working at it, and I wanted to prove everyone wrong, was maybe my motivation in this. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> So that's great. We have a, you know, keep the questions coming in. We want to thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, I'm sure from everything you've seen, if you want to have a similar experience to what Hannah did, uh, then all you have to do, again, come up with that idea. Register by going to youngscientistchallenge.com. The deadline for entries to get that video in, that one to two minute video, is April the 20th. Uh, that's all you have until April the 20th to get that in. Uh, to be a part and have a similar experience to what Hannah had and an opportunity to not only be a finalist, but to be the next top young scientist, to be America's next top young scientist out there. So thank you very much. I uh, want to thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time, Mike. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful day. We hope to see you again on another virtual experience soon. Invention. It's shaped by our very own ideas. And the next could be yours. Discovery Education and 3M want you to reinvent the way we live our lives. Now is your chance to be named America's top young scientist and win $25,000. Enter the 2016 Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge today at youngscientistchallenge.com. Submit a video. It's so worth it. It's just an amazing opportunity.